You're now listening to All Hog Sports. Covering all Arkansas Razorback sports, such as football, basketball, baseball, and much more. Now, here's your host for today's show, Sam Stimson. Hogs are in the college football playoff top 25 for the second ever time in program history. First under coach Sam Pittman in his second year, the Hogs are in the 25th spot in the college football playoff rankings. Now the Hogs play at 6.30 this Saturday at LSU at Tiger Stadium in Death Valley. And that's not an easy place for any team to play or the Hogs. The Hogs have not been favored going into Death Valley before this game since 2001. Arkansas just has not, um, you know, played LSU the great, I think, five games in a row they've lost, and they haven't beat LSU in LSU since 2015. Now, starting it off for the Razorbacks. The Arkansas offense has to be able to sustain drives and um, really can just convert third downs and keep that dual threat ability with KJ running and then um, you know, Smith, Johnson, all the running backs, and then Burks as well. LSU's defense has allowed 397 yards per game, 250 of those in the air, which is usually in the round average, and then 148.2 on the ground, which is actually pretty good. So if Arkansas will have to air the ball out a pretty good amount. The thing is, though, LSU is missing, I think, 11 or 12 starters all around, and a lot of defensive guys like Eli Ricks, um, Derek Stingley Jr., those are like all American type players will go top rounds in the NFL draft and they're hurt and they will not be playing for LSU. Now for LSU though, so their coach O, he's fired, but he's playing out this season, if that makes sense. So he's still going to be able to coach this game. And then, um, you know, like you said, he really wants LSU to finish strong. Back to Arkansas though. The Arkansas um, passing game. K.J. Jefferson, 64.2 completion percentage, which is about what Bros was talking about preseason. I think he said 65 on a dot. So he's been able to keep the part there. Um, 1,848 yards in the air with 9.2 um, per, I think, attempt. And he's done really good. I mean, 16 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. And if you look at the third interception, it was on a Hail Mary against um, Ole Miss in the half. So, like, realistically, if Arkansas is actually playing uh, you know, in a real game, in situations like that, they're not going to throw, um, you know, a Hail Mary. Uh, KJ Jefferson, though, I don't think he really gets the respect that he deserves. This is a guy who is arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Um, but but the thing is, a lot of people just, they just don't respect him, and they don't respect his passing ability, and it's frustrating being an Arkansas fan, watching him every single week, and watching him make these incredible throws, make these incredible runs. I mean, he's got 92 carries for 433 yards on the ground. He's a 400-yard rusher. Arkansas has four 400-yard rushers. But anyway, I, I mean, a lot of people just disrespect him, and it's frustrating because I think K.J. Jefferson is one of the top quarterbacks in the SEC and in the nation. He's done the part this year, and I, I'll argue for him any day of the week. Now, the rushing game, like I was talking about, the rushing game averages 243 yards on the ground. Four 400-yard rushers. Traylon Smith, the leading rusher with 476 yards. Raheem Sanders at 460. KJ Jefferson at 433. And starter now, Dominique Johnson, um, has 56 attempts, which is the lowest out of all these guys for 416 yards. You look at his average yards per carry at 7.4, and you understand why he's starting. He's got six touchdowns for Arkansas. Arkansas really has had a balanced red zone attack. They have 19 rushing yards touchdowns and then they've got 16 in the air so I do expect Arkansas to um, use Smith Sanders and Johnson on the ground maybe bring in green in certain situations um, you know maybe uh, some third down type situations and he's a good pass catcher as well now in the wide receiver core for Arkansas is mainly Warren Thompson Morris and then Burks I'll get to Burks here in a second but Morris has 16 catches, 255 yards. Thompson, 15, 218. And then Warren has 10 for 152. Um, I do expect Trey Knox to get involved in the passing game again. He got four catches last weekend, and he's been doing a good job of getting involved um, in the Arkansas blocking game as well. And that's really where I think he's got a lot of his playing time. Uh, Arkansas, lots of three wide receiver sets with Burks, Morris, Thompson. I mean, Burks, best wide receiver in the nation, in my opinion. 48 catches for 799 yards and 8 touchdowns 
Hard to beat any of those numbers. 16.6 average yards per catch. Arkansas is a team that averages 14.2 yards per completion. It's a really high number. Arkansas getting a lot of explosive plays, 20 plus yards down the field. Now, Arkansas's defense. Um, you'll have probably a 3 2 6 set, maybe 3 3 5 in certain situations. I do expect uh, Poole, Henry, and Morgan to play it at linebacker. Those are the team's three um, inter- total tackle leaders. And then at defensive back, you're going to have Fouché, Brown, Greg Brooks Jr., uh, Simeon Blair, Slusher will be in the rotation, uh, Hudson Clark, Malik Chavis, Jaden Johnson, Ladarius Bishop. Those are all guys that will be involved there. Up front on the defensive line, Arkansas's best defensive line will probably be Ridgeway, Trey Williams, and then either Nichols or Zach Williams, depending if it's run or pass. Arkansas is about five or six deep on defensive line, so they really go with the three-man front and uh, do a lot of like three-on-three subbing and things like that. Arkansas's defensive front has been pretty good this year compared to years past. Um, they have 15 sacks on the year in nine games, so you know not the biggest number there, but I think it's better than last year. And they have also getting a lot of pressures and such, creating uh, tackles for losses, things like that. Arkansas on defense really forced turnovers. You know, they got eight interceptions on the year. Um, you know, the secondary has to hold up well because LSU is bringing an interesting passing attack that I'll talk about here in a second after I get to Arkansas special teams. But yeah, Arkansas defense, really secondary will be key here along with pass rush. Cam Little, though, Arkansas kicker, 33 made extra points. He's 100% on that. 14 out of 18 field goals. He's been kicking some long ones for Arkansas. Arguably freshman All-American. Do an incredible job there. And then Reed Bauer, the punter, who's just placed on scholarship along with the kickoff specialist, Vito Calvaruso. I love how Arkansas has a kickoff specialist. Um, You know, we got a guy who's punting the ball to the end zone every time. Doesn't have to worry about kicking field goals, um, extra points. Fountain doing a really good job in that area. Last game was arguably his best game here at Arkansas. Now this game is versus the LSU Tigers. Now the LSU Tigers bring an interesting offensive front. They average 260.6 passing yards per game and 111.8 rushing yards per game. Their offense scoring 28.7 points per game. Now the part that's really interesting is they plan on using two quarterbacks. Their main quarterback, Max Johnson. He's got 2,000 169 yards, probably one of the better statistics leaders in the SEC. 22 touchdowns with six interceptions and then a 60% completion percentage. Now, they also plan on using freshman Garrett Nussmeyer. Nussmeyer is 11 out of 26 with 150 yards, but they do plan um, on using him a little bit. Now, their leading pass catcher, Kayshawn Butte, uh, he's out for the season due to injury. Now, the big playmaker on this whole LSU team, I think, is Davis Price, the running back for LSU. Um, Unlike Arkansas, LSU really uses one running back, um, Davis Price, 143 attempts, and then they give some to uh, Kenner. He's got 51 attempts. But Davis Price, 143 attempts for 731 yards and six touchdowns. That will be the guy that Arkansas looks to stop. Now, they have a really good wide receiver who lines up in the slot a lot. Zach Betch, 33 catches and 366 yards, is the current leader um, for the team out of active players. He's a talented freshman, uh, got two touchdowns on the season. They've also got some guys like Brian Thompson Jr. and Jare Jenkins. I would expect Monteric Brown to line up um, on Besh and then probably have Ladarius Bishop on guys like Jenkins, Thomas. Um, they've got a lot of different wide receivers who've called passes this year, but the other guys that catch my attention are uh, Trey Palmer as well. Forgot to mention him. Now, their defense, um, they, they play a very interesting defensive front because they lost a lot of defensive linemen. And thing is, with this LSU team as a whole, I feel like you could say this about a lot of their games, is they play like a, differently almost every game, and it's really weird to watch. Um, they've been going with a lot of four main fronts, but like this this season they... You know, they start off bad with a UCA loss, and then they beat Mississippi State after they won three straight. Then they lost to Auburn and Kentucky, then beating Florida, losing to Ole Miss, and then um, losing to Alabama on the road. But they looked the part in that game. Like, if you didn't know the record and watched how they play number two Alabama, which many teams can't keep up with, 
you would have thought they were a top 25 team based on how they played in that game. LSU, they did really good against a rush last week. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, Alabama had six rushing yards. This is an Alabama team with like five-star linemen across the board. Uh, Brian Thompson, Brian Robinson Jr., the running back, had 13 carries for 18 yards. Um, they got to the quarterback a lot last week. This game does fall in the protection of Arkansas's offensive line with how good that LSU front played last week at LSU. You've got to have all guys across the board not only blocking well in pass protection and run protection, you've got to avoid penalties. Arkansas can't go into Death Valley and commit like 9 or 10 penalties for 90 yards and expect to win. Arkansas is like top 10 in the NCAA in penalties. It's frustrating because it's it's an issue. Like This is not a situation where this is all refs. And I do agree, Arkansas does get some bad calls that a lot of teams don't get. But... Again, your top 10 in penalties, it's a constant issue. Arkansas has to fi- fix up things like false starts. There really aren't like ref penalties. Now, Arkansas allows 351.2 yards per game, 195 in the air and 156 on the ground. LSU allowing 397, uh, 249 in the air. And like I said, their rush defense is really good. Behind that rush defense is... Um, Damon Clark, he had eight tackles against Alabama. And the thing is, this, like I like I just keep on saying, they've got a lot of guys up front, Cameron Lewis, Mike Jones Jr., recording sacks against Alabama. So Arkansas, key to this game is be able to block well up front and establish a running game. Now looking at some history between these two teams, the Golden Boot Rivalry. LSU leads the series 42-22 to with two ties being involved. They have dominated for the last decade, winning five straight. I and mean, then if you look at the other ones, um, they won seven out of three the last ten. Arkansas getting two wins in 2014 and in 2015. Um, a lot of history between these two teams goes back all the way probably to like 19... 19- uh, 08, 07, that's when the teams really started playing a lot back then. So they're always fighting for the Golden Boots. Now Arkansas is currently a 2.5 point favorite with the over-under set at 59. I don't know if it'll stay around there or you know if uh, that LSU will be favored going in the game. It'll be interesting to see. But Arkansas has a 41% chance to win the game per ESPN FPI. <laughs> It's time for Sam's Prediction. Sam's Prediction. I've got the Hogs just winning a nail-biter. I'm talking super close game here. 31-30. I think Arkansas is able to establish um, the passing game well against LSU, but the rushing game struggles. I think the main thing that Arkansas has to do against LSU here is just establish a rushing game with Johnson, Sanders. And I think this is a situation where Arkansas is going to go to different rushers. I'm not sure if Johnson will be averaging 7 yards per carry every single play just because of how good LSU is. Um, You know, and I'd love him to do that. I think he has the capability of doing so, but LSU also has a good, um, you know, attack up front. I I do see Arkansas winning, though, finally in Death Valley. I know it's a night game. I know it's a tough situation, but uh, I do see them establishing a dual threat offense, getting around 300 and like 20 yards would be ideal. And I think a defense, Arkansas secondary really just has to lock in, get pressure up front. I like Arkansas in this game because we have a lot of starters still. You know, if you look at the original depth chart, LSU from the middle of the season is missing like double digit um, guys. And Arkansas is only missing Catalan and Gerald. The whole offense is healthy. Nobody really got too banged up in the last game against Mississippi State. And I think Arkansas, they, the offensive line is going to play better this week after last week's performance. Um, really wasn't that good with all the false start penalties and such. Discipline, though, is key here. Now on Friday, I'll be recapping the Mercer game that was played yesterday, and then I'll preview the Gardner-Webb game for basketball. As always, though, y'all know the deal. Woo pig suey. That's all for today's episode of All Hog Sports with Sam Stimson. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode covering all Arkansas Razorback sports. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media, too. On Twitter and Instagram at All Hog Sports Pod. Like on Facebook at All Hog Sports and Arkansas Razorbacks Podcast. 
and on YouTube at that.